The debris fill of the Titan submersible has been found. It imploded catastrophically on descent. Nobody knows exactly when, but it stopped pinging back to the mothership about two hours on its descent down to the uh, Titanic wreckage. All crew members have been lost. They likely all perished instantly in the catastrophic implosion that took place. So my friends, this is a catastrophic loss. It's a sad day for people in the uh, ventures and tourism business. But uh, uh, there's a Paul Harkin, undersea expert, uh, talking about this. He said that five different major pieces of the debris field told us that it was indeed the remains of the Titan. And the initial thing we found, he said, was a nose cone. Uh, so, and then we found the large debris field. Uh, with, uh, within that large debris field, we found the front end bell of the pressure hull. That was the first indication there was a catastrophic event. He went on to say that shortly after that, we found a second smaller debris field within that debris field. And we found the other end of the pressure hull basically comprising the totality of that pressure chamber. So I was lost. Uh, Rear Admiral John uh, Mauger, I don't even they maybe pronounce his name Major. It's spelled M-A-U-G-E-R, but I've heard that pronounced different ways. It's sound, spelled Mauger. He said that uh, yeah, the recovery of this stuff will be incredibly complex. They don't know if they can get the bodies, but you know he's a rear admiral of the Coast Guard. He was probably the first one that actually announced the loss of this uh, crew, the event that just took place. So um, yeah, it was five crew members in this submersible, the Titan. And uh, the furthermore, um, they were uh, the following individuals. It was uh, the British adventurer, Hamish Harden, who was 58, a French veteran uh, Titanic explorer, Paul uh, Herney Negro, Negro La, Le, I don't know, I can't, Negro Le. Uh, and there was a 77 year old British Pakistani businessman, uh, Shazda Dawood, and uh, wait, wait uh, the other guy was. He was actually 48, so I got the age of Mr. He had his 19-year-old son. And then there was Stockton Rush, the CEO of the company, who was 61. It's kind of weird that this guy would not hire anybody uh, older than 50 because they didn't have the imagination. Okay, so he also didn't have the experience. But, you know, he believed his own hype. He believed his own systems because he wrote it down all the way. Um and that reminds me of what a lot of us know in the safety community, a lot of us older, more experienced safety engineers, at least. And uh, I've tried to teach the younger safety engineers this quite often, is that um, engineers in typical thinking success space. My baby's good. I designed it. My baby's great. It, my, my, my baby, it's whatever I designed, whatever your project is. It's going to work because of this, that, and the other. They think in success space. that They don't think about it failing because they think they're designed is bulletproof but uh we safety engineers i've been a safety engineer for 20 years now working rockets and spacecraft specializing in avionics avionic system safety but we think in failure space we have to think of how it will fail what could go wrong and then what you can do to mitigate that that's you know i made good money doing it for some 20 years guys so uh, but you always have to fight the management and, and the engineers you know they have a hard time swallowing what could go wrong? So when you have the you know, owner of the company, it also would like to have the same uh, bent. Now, case in point, I'll give you a strong case in point that you'll be able to recognize right off the bat. Let's go to Scale Composites, uh, which built the original Spaceship One and designed and built the, uh, the Spaceship Two vehicles to be flown by Virgin Galactic. Uh, you know, the, uh, they believe that their, their system was not failable. Uh, they uh, went around and uh, I'm getting brain locked right now. <laughs> they went around saying that, hey, uh, we're safe. We've got two pressure holes. You know, we, we can't fail. We, um, we, we, we're, we're the safest thing. In fact, going around saying the NASA, we're calling NASA naysay. Uh, so guys, it just so happens that uh, they've yet to fly a paying tourist on Virgin Galactic and already have lost four people. One of them, my good friend, uh, Glenn May. Three of them perished in a cold flow test for the motor at the Mojave Airport. And that should not have been at the Mojave Airport in the first place. Uh, 
George Whitesides was CEO and president of Virgin Electric for a while, and they had some plans showing uh, doing a refill of this thing underneath the uh, in, in within the airport underneath where the people was going to be gathering, like the tourists and the passengers, families. And I said, no, you cannot do that. Absolutely, do not do that. And I just crawled it, crawled them at one side and down the other. I wasn't part of that operation, but when I saw the architect sketching that out, I said, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, you cannot do that. And he, he relented on that. But, you know, I also told him they need to consider those wings, uh, limited life items, those long spindly uh, carbon composite wings, both for the carrier vehicle and for the, uh, the st- uh, spaceship itself, because those carbon fibers have a tendency to crack and it's hard to see. And I've heard recently, it's been said that they're cracked like eggshells. Uh, anyway, so uh, Bert Rutan, that's the name I was trying to think of. I knew Bert Rutan. He was the one calling this and they say I get brain locked sometimes these days. <laughs> but anyway, Bert Rutan, uh, you know, he was in charge of it. And he, you know, he quit. He shut up when they lost three people. Then they lost a, a pilot on a powered flight because he accidentally, uh, is hoped or believed, pulled the uh, control, then unleashed the shuttlecock feathering mechanism, which you should do on re entry. Well, he did on an ascent. And uh, one of those craft uh, disintegrated on ascent. So, guys, there's a lot of failure modes, and you need good, experienced people to think through these things. And uh, right now, after the Richard Branson flight, 100 tickets were sold to go on uh, Virgin Galactic. 100 tickets at 450,000 each. I don't know how many of these sold earlier when they were selling at 250,000 dollars. So, guys, where you get on board, you need to ask a lot of questions to to these guys. If you got any friends or family flying. You need to ask a lot of critical questions. You're not going to find it on our website. You won't find anything but, but high-end fluff pr- market promotion stuff. It's all dreamy. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, it may not be. It may very well not be. There's a lot of questions that need to be answered there, too. See my previous video. Uh, I'll, I'll post a link toward the end of this video uh, where uh, I'm talking about questions that needed to be asked for this uh, uh, deep, uh, this Ocean Gate Titan submarine because there were a lot of questions on the table. Was there a hole thick enough? Obviously not. You know, they had two people inside who challenged it and they got fired and one of them got sued. Well, he was also accused of releasing proprietary information, probably because he just mentioned what the hole thickness was. It was uh, at least a prototype, five inches, and it should have been seven. And they claimed that, you know, that the, the one that went out wasn't the same and it might've been thicker, but we don't know that. We just don't know that. And was it adequate? What kind of engineering went into this? Uh, when they won't hire anybody that might be experienced because they might not have imagination. Well, guess what? What you get? And, you know, sad, it's sad. It is sad that these people lost their lives. It is sad that this happened. But this is, let this be a wake-up call. If you're to get involved in something like this, you better ask a lot of questions. Commercial FFA uh, for commercial aircraft require millions of flight hours before they allow you to use it for uh, people to fly on commercial traffic. That's why air traffic is so safe, it's safer than driving in a car. Yet, um, you know, you can't do that practically with these smaller systems because you don't, you know, you would be an infinite budget. You not, could not afford to develop anything in that scenario. And for that reason, I actually uh, was part of the effort pushing, uh, chairman of the Policy Committee of the National Space Society, that uh, these commercial space uh, adventure craft, the uh, space tourism vehicles, not be subjected to that rigor and it we actually report to the AST side of the FAA instead of the commercial aviation side. Interestingly, but retail wanted to pull it the other way because he thought he had the deeper pockets and choke out all this competition doing that. <laughs> but guys, that's uh, neither here nor there now. Either way it goes, you still need rigorous safety, rigorous reliability in these systems. And it wasn't there. It's obvious. It is absolutely obvious now by the loss of this crowd. And I expect we'll lose other people and, and other uh, ventures like this down the road. It's risky. It's dangerous. Just know that before you get on board. It's always going to be dangerous when you're reaching the limits. And uh, see, the ocean is far, except for the rock. When you go to space, you're going up on a controlled explosion and you come back down like a meteorite. That's very risky. But when you're in space, the difference in pressure is only one atmosphere. When you're going down to the ocean, the difference in pressure is much, much, much greater. And quite frankly, we just don't have the systems and technology and things readily available to get things out there fast to be able to do a rescue operation. And these guys, you know, if they had a catastrophic uh, hole implosion, which is what it seems to be, there would have been no way to rescue them anyway. They would have been lost instantaneously. So there's nothing that makes up for good design. Nothing. 
you're not going to walk around in an ocean suit, you know, at 12,000, 13,000 feet below sea level because the pressures are just too great to, to have anything other than a large, extremely heavy pressure hull for you to ride in. So it's very different going down to the ocean. That's why we've not done as much ocean exploration. It seems like we'd be doing a lot more of that, but it's tough. I, I think we need to do more, but it's tough to do. I, I'd like to see more of it. I'd like to see cities in the sea, under the sea. <laughs> But we got a lot of work to do before we get there. A lot of good engineering needs to be done. All right, I've said enough. Uh, we've lost these five individuals. We lost that crew, the CEO of the company. I don't know how the company can survive that kind of a loss with the CEO and, and it, just the, everything entailed with having uh, lost something like this. You know, that's probably a, a death knell to the company itself. And if they should resurrect somehow and get back in business, let's hope that they pay attention to safety. And let's hope that all the other people out there, whether you're trying to do a stratosphere uh, balloon adventure, or if you're trying to do a, a launch into space, that the system safety is, and the reliability go hand in hand and are rigorously attended to. That people ask the questions and that they, that the people promoting this stuff to quit doing all those stupid little fluff websites like uh, Virgin Galactic has. I wouldn't write on anything where I saw that market in fluff like that. And that, let that be an object lesson for you. Don't buy into the fluff. If you buy into the fluff, you might be uh, underground and six foot under. So if, if you're not dust in the sky or something in the mud at the bottom of the ocean, you'd be lucky to get six feet underground. Uh, so they may never recover these bodies. They're lost in space, forget about it. <laughs> So, guys, that's the end of it. That's the story. Uh, sad ending, but let's hope it's a lesson learned for all such ventures going forward. That, I hope it don't stop the venture. I hope it's not a Hindenburg moment. I hope it's a, a lessons learned moment. Let us wake up and pay attention to what needs to be done. I will give credit, credit, some credit to Virgin uh, uh, Blue Origin, excuse me, because I see they're trying to hire some safety engineers. Anyway, with that said, Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to my channel, bang the notification bell, and look for that uh, link right here to the video, uh, the previous video, questions uh, that I was asking about this. You need to see those questions. I'll talk about some of the safety systems. With that said, thank you for watching. Greg out.